Of that stuff. <laughs> I don't have any picks here. I have to use a quarter. <laughs> Maybe it's because I'm Jewish and I feel like I feel more more in tune when I'm playing a quarter. <laughs> Happy Passover. <laughs> Happy Easter. <laughs> yep, I gave up. Uh, I gave up here for Lent this year. <laughs> But not tequila. Everybody's on. Oh, uh, you know, I don't Dennis. really do the tequila, but I oh, definitely drink vodka. What's, what's up, Craig? Um, oh, yeah. Uh, Dennis. Sorry, I missed you guys last week. I was with I was with Mitch. Better with the back on. Yeah. I was it? Was it great? It was awesome. Do I need this up or lower or up? I'm in my garage, as you can see, with my with my two babies. Perfect. Two babies in a very <laughs> neat garage. Old one. Fast new one. <laughs> right? Yeah. How's everyone doing? Good? Yes. Awesome. 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 Woke up today. Good day. Hey. Yeah. Exactly. Right. All right. Thanks, hey. Dr. Dre. You're welcome. It's middle. Get the throw. Coming in hot. Yeah. Huh? If anybody else. Love, love the white belt. Okay. Do we have everybody uh, rolling? We got everybody going? Everybody's going. Okay. <coughs> What's up, Pete? Anybody else? What's happening? Oh, look at Roberto Martino. Move up San Diego, baby. All right. Let's see who Good else. Good morning, everybody. Going. How y'all doing? Um, hey, Bobby. Well. Doing great, pal. Bobby, I've never seen you look like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I knew I knew you guys were going to say that. Like, what's he doing with a hat on? Right? Did you not do your hair today? Well, well, that I just just got done working out. So uh, oh, yeah. Okay. Come on, take All the right. hat off for a Do second. Start. Let's take it off for a second. Hey! Oh my God! There you go. Hey, uh, <laughs> look at best hair in the business, the Elvis right. of San Diego. Yeah. Yep. Well, I, I got to tell you, I'm, I'm known for the best back here in Florida, so. Wow. That's <laughs> a tough one. Totally. Tough, tough yeah, mental tough. limits yeah, there, Mitch. Uh, tough mental know. limits. It is what it is. All right, well, let's ramp, ramp this up. So today's topic is how to run a strategy session and convert buyers in this market so that they're committed to you. We see far too many times that buyers are floating around. They're not committing to anyone. They're calling, Bobby has realized this before, even though he's moving around, I think he's still working out, that sometimes buyers will call and say, are you the listing agent? I only want to deal with the listing agent, or they're just not committed. They're working with five or six agents all over the place and agents become Uber drivers and so forth. So we want to break down today the process on how to get buyers committed to you and working with you and signing buyer brokers and then buying houses. That's our goal today. I'm gonna to start off with Mitch because I know he was probably playing the guitar this morning. It's noontime in Florida. So Mitch, what was yeah, your right. process to convert buyers either off the internet or referrals or people that you just popped into at open houses? How did you convert them to work exclusively with you? So, you know, it's funny. Um... I, I learned a few things at the beginning of my career that were there were life changing as far as being a being a, a realtor and I, and I'll, mainly I it's just it's the education process right so I'm gonna give you a quickie on how I did this so everybody everybody funnels into the same place but once I get them on my first conversation well first conversation where they're actually ready to buy um, I, I educate them on the process so and, and today you have to do it even a little bit more involved because of the lack of inventory, but here's my basis and here's my line to everybody. And I don't care if you're brand new, and I, and I was fairly new when I actually came up with this. Uh, I don't care if you're brand new, I don't care if you've been doing this for 100 years. If you don't educate your buyer on the process and how you get paid, then they don't really understand. And, and I'll give you the quick story behind that. My wife and I were in, in class together getting our real estate license, although she never got it because she had a medical thing, but now she has it. Uh, but anyway, so. Um, we're talking about loyalty and stuff like that. My wife had worked with a broker for many, many years 
and, and the same realtor, and she'd been looking for the new a new house for a year, and then went to an open house and bought the house from the people at the open house because they told him, them he she, they would take care of her realtor. Well, we know what that means, right? Um, and and they did. They totally screwed the guy out of everything. Back they, that couple actually got kicked out of the real estate board, which is very hard to do in real estate, right? Um, but so when we, when my wife was telling me this story, I'm like, well, why did you do that? She goes, and my wife's a smart girl. She bought many many homes, but she had really believed until we became realtors that if you that realtors get car allowance, they get base plus. They knew they made commission, but they didn't know they were 100 commission. So when I started my career, one of the first things I did was learn how, do, how am I going to educate my customer? So here's my line. Um, hey, I'll just use um, Craig here because, you know, he's a Philly guy and he has good cheesecake. Uh, cheesesteaks. Um, maybe cheesecake too. But uh, so, so Craig, let me, I want to explain to you how I work. Uh, I'm going to give you 150% in, in buying your home. I'm really, really good at it. By the way, that word really, really good at it. If you're brand new, they will never ask you how many homes you've sold. Right. And, and you just assume confidence always wins. Pete, Pete and I talk about that all the time. Confidence goes so far in, in our business and in our lives. So, Craig, I'm going to give you 150%. Keep in mind, if you do not buy a house too many, I do not get paid. And I'm sure, like yourself, when you do your job, could you like to get paid? I like to get paid also. Uh, so, I want to go over a few things with you that are really important to me. Uh, you are going to go into the open houses. Here's some business cards. If you, if you go into the open house, uh, the first thing I want you to do is give the realtor your card and say, I'm working with Mitch. That's number one. Secondly, you're going to drive by signs, realtor signs. Call me. If for some reason I can't show you at that moment, I work with a whole lot of realtors. I can get somebody other to show you at that moment. Call me. If you call the other realtor, you're not getting represented. Uh, if you're going to, and I'm, I'm saying this a lot quicker than I normally would say this, by the way. Um, if you see it for sale by owner, for sale by owners have no idea how to sell their homes. And many, many times you'll get in trouble buying a for sale by home because they don't do sales disclosures. They don't disclose anything. Um, so when you see if it sells by owner sign, call me and I will take care of it for you. Uh, and last but not least, new construction. Are you remotely interested in new construction? And keep in mind, again, if I don't take you to the location, I don't get, I'm not involved in the transaction and I can't help you. So it's very important that I take you. So I educated them on the whole process. And by the way, when I, when I almost died in 2004, I stopped working on Sundays. Everybody told me I go out of business. Part of my spiel became, you have me from Monday through Saturday from eight to eight. Uh, on Saturday, Sunday is my family day. You can't handle that. I'm probably the wrong realtor for you. I, but I do have a lot of people that will help you if I, if I need to show you, if you need to see a property that day. I did not lose one customer. In fact, once I started doing that, I never lost a customer again. Actually, it was one. There was one woman that I couldn't stand, so I was really glad she left me. Uh, <laughs> um, but literally, when you do that, you're securing that person as a customer. I call, my mother taught me Jewish guilt. You know, we're talking about Passover early. Uh, Jewish guilt is really good. If you make them understand how you get paid, and, and by the way, if you still suck, you still suck. Don't get me wrong, they're going to fire you. But if you work really hard, you want to make them understand that you got, they're going to they're going to work with you. So that's my best advice. And the other thing, the other one thing I'll throw out there really quick: when you're talking to a buyer right now and trying to explain the process of today's market, a lot of times they think you're just trying to get um, you're just trying to make more commission by making them buy pay more for the house. So I had one of my, I was with one of my agents a few weeks ago. We didn't have this conversation with their customer and they had offered $25,000 more if they wanted the property. I said, look, this, and that's what they said. Well, you guys just try to make more money. You guys are salespeople. I go, here's the deal. This is just the way the market is. And I opened up my laptop and I showed them the lot. I randomly picked a neighborhood and I randomly showed the houses. There was not one house that sold under asking price. I go, so show them, don't tell them, show them. And they'll actually believe you. Uh, and then I said to the guy, I said, look, here's the deal. We're going to make an extra $300 on this transaction. Uh, with that $25,000, I will write you a check at, on, at closing day for $300. $300. We're going to make $300. Um, so again, put the reality in their life and protect yourself by doing Now, a lot of people do buy a brokerage agreement. They are not big here. I hugely believe in them, but they're not big here. Um, I know some places they have, so I've never really used one. Um, but that's, that's my thing. There you go. I love it. Hey, is it true that you had a slogan for buyers that said, don't be a bitch, make sure you buy with Mitch? Is I had that, that yep. Yeah. It is okay. very true, yep. Yeah. I just wanted to clarify that. I want yeah, to it, was move on, from it, it, it was my billboards. It was really good. Yeah, yeah. It worked really well for me. Yeah, I, <laughs> I knew that that's how you set people up. 
So I want to move from Orlando down to Philly with, where they probably still have snow in mid April or towards the end of April. So we're going to talk to Craig Lurch. Lurchy, how are you capturing people, either leads coming in on the internet, on the phone, at open houses, through past clients? What is your process to get them committed, educated, and signing a buyer broker to work with you? I think the biggest thing is understanding exactly who your right client is as an agent. And I actually admitted this. I, I put it out on TikTok and out on, on Instagram the other day. I said, I'll be honest with you. I'm not everybody's client. I am not the person who's going to be very analytical. I'm not that client. I'm not, I'm not the agent for you. I'm not the client that you're going to tell me how to do my job. I'm, I'm not going to do that. Not so much. Bottom line is you have to be willing to say no. You have to be able to work with people that you want to work with in your corral. There are enough people that want to work with you because if not, you're distracting from the people to do because you have too much sausage in a 10 pound and in, in, in a sleeve. You got to take out to put in. You just can't work with everybody. You can't be everything to everybody. You can't, you know, and I say to my buyers, same thing to you. I said, Mr. and Mrs. Buyer, you want me to be everything to you, then you got to be everything to me. If your significant other is out dating other people while you're married, are you going to take that well? Maybe some relationships are good with it. Well, I don't want you out dating other realtors because it becomes confusing. You're not understanding where we're at. So if you're okay with a commitment, you're okay knowing that I'm going to give you value. And again, this is difficult for some new agents coming in. I love that line, really, really good service. Maybe you need to partner up with somebody for the first couple of deals. Understand that. Get a mentor. Get a good coach. You got to learn your skills. If you don't know your skills, it's going to bleed through. Because if I'm interviewing a buyer and you're interviewing a buyer, I can guarantee it. They're going to sign my buyer agency and you're going to be a taxi cab. Because I point blank tell them. I was like, look, I'm not a pop tart. I'm not a taxi cab. I need to be paid because when I'm away from my family, I need to be paid because I want to be with my family. I have a purpose. Have fun change lives, make money. If it's not in those funnels, it don't come near me. It's not in here. So the buyers really understand it and be willing to say no. It's okay, go over there. And Mitch, you're absolutely right. Tell them no matter what you see, you got to call me. Don't call anybody. Forget those phone numbers. I'm the direct line and they will call you. It's explaining it. Great stuff. Great stuff from Philly. I love that. We got to go right around the horn. This is like the new Hollywood squares. So we got to go to Bobby Martins. Now I know this guy has a process. Look at, look at his hat. He's moving on up. He's like George Jefferson. Hey, tell me your process when it comes to receiving a lead. What, what is the process to set it up, convert those leads? Cause it's all about conversion and getting people to commit. A lot of people don't understand that. They think it's all about the leads. There's leads all over the place, you guys. It's about conversion. Who are you converting? Who are you creating a relationship with? Who are you getting committed to to help them in the process of buying a house? Go ahead, Bobby. Well, I think it's important to start off with a very good qualification call. That first call, you're basically determining, is this person, person motivated to buy and sell a property? Are they capable of it? Once I get the uh, warm and fuzzies, I'm, go I'm closing for the lender appointment, you know, getting the lender to talk to them first before our appointment. And we'll set that appointment for the planning session, uh, basically giving them enough time to get their loan done. And I tell them, hey, get your loan in place before this meeting so we know exactly what price points we're going to hammer when we do our meeting? Because what's the point of us getting together if we don't know, you know your exact price point? And um, I tap into no, uh, local knowledge. I've lived here since 1984. You know, I kind of I, I say I say the same thing over and over again. I mean, it's it's really no, nothing different. So that's you got to you know, and everybody's uh, you know, uh, everyone's going to be a little different in that regards, obviously. So. Um, now, once we get them into the office, we come at them immediately with making them feel like, hey, this is a long term relationship that we're trying to start with you. Um, you know, many of my best clients today, after 20 years being in the business, they were buyers 20 years ago, 20, uh, 18 years ago, 15 years ago. 
And so I've done now multiple transactions and that's why we came up with this whole move up thing. In 2005, we, we uh, started the website Move Up San Diego. I, I wanted to not only do that one transaction, but the next one and the next one. And so I, I really get them feeling that we're uh, not just trying to put them into a house, not just the number. And we don't do buyer broker agreements only because there's a percentage of people that won't sign those no matter what. And so to me, I don't want to lose a perfectly good client that I know I can close if given the opportunity to service them. And so, uh, so I've, uh, you know, people have said, oh, I'm talking to three realtors. Oh, okay, okay, great. No problem. Let's, let, let, me, let me work with you. And as soon as we start working with them, see that there's something different we're bringing drinks to showings we're bring bringing food you know all kinds of stuff if they have kids we're bringing stuffed animals for the kids so you know you start getting that relationship and then you you now have that client for life so uh, but at the planning session it should be the same thing every single time that you're talking about we talk about open houses we talk about um, how I get paid that they they're not necessarily us directly and we get paid nothing if nothing happens so obviously we have a vested interest in making sure you find a property and we just kind of take them through all the processes that we you know like for example if we put in an offer on on the neighborhood and you don't get it we're door knocking that neighborhood immediately to see if there's somebody else that, that would sell your property so i kind of go through the whole process and this is something that uh, we actually do a commitment to excellence document. We have, uh, we sign it and it's me guaranteeing our service to them. And of course we do an agency, uh, you know, disclosure, all of that stuff is normal, but I just don't want to, you know, do a, a buyer broker agreement that's really unenforceable. And, you know, I, I'm not going to ever sue anybody. And I kind of talk about it just like this. And, and I tell them why I don't like them and why I think that they're, not in your best interest. And so I really kind of flip the script uh, in that meeting, let them know how I'm different than, you know, because keep in mind, you know, the average person out there don't have the highest regards of real estate agents. So if you come off as that guy, then a certain, a certain percentage you're going to lose no matter what. And, and they can be viable leads, you know, so I, uh, I try to get as much business as we can. And then one of the things that we say, um, you know, when you're out looking at homes, do you want somebody all swarming all over you, or do you want to be relaxed when you're when you're showing properties? And they'll always say, "I want to be relaxed. I don't want to have people, um, you know, pushing things." And so, and that's really when I introduce the buyer's agent that's going to be doing the showings and kind of hand them off. And I I put us on a three-way text chain. I stay involved in it because that's, you know, one thing you don't want is them feeling like you just handed them off, especially if it was a referral or a past client, things like that. So that's been one of the ways that we've been able to hand off those leads. And I tell them that as far as, you know, once you find a property, that's when I come back in, you know, because obviously uh, they want me to help negotiate that transaction. But on a lot of, uh, you know, I, I've got people on my team now that are so good at negotiating, a lot of them are doing the negotiating now. So, uh, so over time, I've been able to teach that to, uh, to the team and now they're doing an amazing job. But I think the biggest thing is to, to just have a clear conversation about how you get paid. And if you're not happy at any time, let me know, give me an opportunity to fix it. Um, and, and then also, you know, making sure they understand like the guy at the open house or girl at the open house, they are typically not the listing agent. And if they're telling you they need to write an offer through them to please call me right away and not, and you know, that agent is not to be trusted, but, uh, you know, given the cards, that's a great idea, uh, Craig, that's something that we've done in the past and is effective. And, uh, but yeah, I mean, I think in general, just in, in the other thing too, right now is, people aren't willing to uh, to maybe go that extra mile and go a little bit over asking to, to get a deal, then right now might not be the best time. However, that might change very, very soon. So keep people stockpiling these guys and, you know, they might not be a buyer today, but six months from now when the market maybe hits, you know, the skids a little bit, you know, who knows what's going to happen there. And, you know, if you, if we hit the market with a load of buyers 
ready to go and then the market hits the skids and now we have all this inventory now you're going to be able to negotiate good deals for your buyers and then the, again those are buyers for life and then the other key with them is we're asking for referrals from the get-go because you know obviously they're not actually paying us money so you know oh look at you got <laughs> your buddy's coming in here to say hi <laughs> so Anyways, so, but that's about it. I mean, I think, uh, you know, I could talk about this subject for days. But it uh, The key is just, you know, uh, make sure you talk about everything that you need to. And don't be afraid to ask those questions like, are you looking at homes with another agent or, you know, that, that kind of stuff. You want to know as much of that as possible. You know, I think that's, that's a great point. Um, Bobby, somebody had a quick question saying, is it possible to lose a personal relationship with the client by having a showing agent involved? It, it, it can. Um, I had one situation, and this is out of hundreds, you know, doing it this way. Uh, I had one situation where I lost a past client because they didn't like the person that I gave them to help them with the purchase. So I actually did not get the repeat business of that. that okay, helped. Well, it, yeah, I'm not going to get them all. That was a great question by Dwayne Whitaker asking that. And, you know, that's probably on a lot of people's minds. It's all in how you do the handoff. And what I typically do is I'll pull my clients aside and say, look, you know, sometimes all, all sizes don't fit. So if for some reason the, the person on my team isn't doing what they need to do, confidentially reach out to me so I can have the opportunity to make it right. I'm never going to throw you on the bus or, or put you in an awkward position. We're all here to service you as a team. We want you to win. You know, our whole goal is to be in service to others. So I want to go from Bobby. Great information. Uh, Bobby and I have gone through this system and strategy sessions with buyers for years and years and years. Now he's been watching the Jeffersons. He's moving on up. He's got his whole deal going. We're going to go from Bobby over to Dennis D'Souza, who's in the white Porsche dealership in San Diego. Dennis, what are you guys doing to convert buyers right now in this competitive market to make sure they stay committed to you? Yeah. So, you know, everybody has to remember <clears throat> there's one radio station that human beings, buyers, sellers, you, me, everybody kind of listens to. It. It's WIFM, right? Um, what's in it for me? So it's just human nature. So we always try to you know, not spin, but we always try to, you know, craft our message to that, to that effect. So what we tell buyers, and if we get a call and they're like, we're just calling listing agents, like we spoke about earlier, we just bring up the fact that, Hey, listen, most of the listings that are listed, they have a personal connection right, with that agent. They're a friend. They're a previous agent that sold them the house. So let me ask you, Mr. Buyer, do you think that agent that listed that home that's a friend of that person is going to represent you better than they are them. And it just kind of puts that, and it's the truth, right? So, you know, the listing agents get a really close connection with that seller. They're really fighting for that seller, not for you. So we just make sure, and that kind of, that kind of puts some doubt in their mind about going to the listing agent every single time. Okay. So that's one, one little, um, you know, trick that we do um, for, for buyers. Uh, the other thing is, you know, we, as far as the buyer broker goes, we, we do use them sometimes. And what we basically say to them is, hey, listen, you know, if, if, you're, if you're working with 10 different agents, let me ask you a question. Do you think those 10 different agents are all going to give you their 100%? And the answer is no. So, so you have faith in me. I have faith in you, kind of like what you guys spoke about earlier. So if I know you're 100% committed to me, I am 1,000% committed to you. I'll work as hard as I can. I will tell you everything wrong about a house, not all the good stuff, but everything wrong about a house. If you're working with 10 different agents, you know what they're going to do? They're just going to try to sell you houses because they know you're working with 10 different agents. So, you know, who's going to give you better representation? Somebody that doesn't really care, that knows you're cheating on them or somebody that's got 100% faith with you. So that's kind of the two cents that I have to put in there. We kind of, that's kind of like the buyer track that we talk about. If that makes I like sense. that. I like uh, creating faith and creating that relationship right up front. I think it's really important, guys, to pre-frame expectations and how things work. Because if you don't, people assume they work a certain way. And when they assume, they make an ass out of you and me, right? That's, that's what assume means. 
So I'm going to go from Dennis. That's great stuff, Dennis, on trying to, to build that relationship, build that faith, and really explain who the listing agent actually works for. All these people are trying to shortcut it, go direct to the, to the listing agent, and they feel that they are going to make a better deal or get the bottom line from the listing agent, which is not the case. You know, the listing agent already has a relationship with the sellers who have signed a contract with them. Keep that in mind. The buyer is coming from nowhere and has no relationship and hasn't signed anything with the listing agent. And the listing agent's gonna get paid regardless. So I think you have to explain that. Let's go out to the islands, the beautiful island of Martha's Vineyard or Martha's Vineyard. I can't, I can't, I can't say it. I'm not gonna try it today. We're gonna go out to Janet Lee Scott. And Janet, how are you guys converting people on the island? I know you get a lot of transient people, not homeless people, but transient people that come out to the islands at different times of year. They come out for weekends, they're looking for second homes. Is it a different process when you're dealing with those types of buyers, say vacation home buyers or buyers looking for a secondary or third type of home? What are you finding out on the islands? So I would say um, we get a lot, and as uh, Pete knows, he's been to my office, we get uh -huh. a lot of walk-in walk traffic. Um, and what we, we have a, a, a process, if whoever is doing, and I love the way Pete says it, opportunity time, whoever's in there, if somebody comes in, we have this archaic document called a real estate guide. It is paper-based and in color. And at this in, in this market, as soon as it's published, it's obsolete. So the first thing we do, our MLS will allow us to enter in um, client information, and then we can set them up with access to what we call our link, which is the MLS we use. And we sort of show them how it works. And then they, and at that point, then I can, I, I don't want to come across as a stalker, but I can actually go through and see what my clients are looking at so that if I know of a property and they seem to be narrowing it on something, I can just reach out to them and just say, hey, you know, this just came on the market. You, what do you want to do about it? Um, and then the other thing is, because um, <clears throat> I'm from the South, I'm pretty friendly. And I usually give them a warning. I said, you know, if your friend card is full, you might not want to work with me because most of my clients become really good friends. Um, and that is, it disarms them quite a bit because they are expecting me to be a real estate agent. And I, and then we reiterate, um, we work for you. Our fiduciary responsibility is to you. Um, we are very uh, analytical in our office. We take everything down to nuts and bolts. So, um, and in that environment, those uh, buyers like that because they like to just compare apples to apples. Um, we don't really use buyer agents here uh, as much as everybody else. Um, we have, we, if I need, so last year I got COVID. Yes, after vaccines and everything, we got it. And I had a property that was very hot. And I had someone in my office that, you know, went out there and showed it. Um, I will probably never do that again because I had written out exactly how this house was to be walked through and explained. I had, you know, in my world, because, you know, we're not handling the 30 and 40 houses. Every house has a story and I have to create the story for that seller. And then I craft it. And anybody that walks in, I'm telling them the story, whatever it is. And I, I said, start at the front door and this is what you're going to do. Boom, 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 boom. Didn't do a thing, did nothing. So when I am able to talk to the, uh, the we, they put it on an offer, they get it accepted. And I see them at, um, when they do another walkthrough after the offer and, and she says a few things and I'm like, who told you that? Um, well, she said, the person that showed me the property. And I said, well, let me just help you understand. Um, and and I, was, I was very aggravated that I had taken my time to tell you exactly how to show this property. And it was all for naught. And you gave misinformation. In this particular instance, it's a, what we call an undersized lot. And the... Agents, the buyer said, well, can I put a pullback here? 
And the agent said, well, you just, it's a, you need to get a variance. You know, you need to know who to hire, but it should be okay. It's not okay. It can't happen. They've stopped putting pools in non-commercial areas in the village. So had that transaction actually gone any further, uh, we were at a huge risk. So I, I'm pretty picky about who, if I can't do something, who I let show property. Um, that being said, the other thing, and I think I mentioned the last time we were, we were together, um, everybody will come in and they'll say, can you buy a house under a million? You know, they could walk in the door. You know, I'm on the vineyard. Can I buy a house for under a million? And I said, well, of course you can. And that's when I take them over and we have a beautiful big screen and I introduce them that way. Um, and then they know that we know the inventory. We know everything that's out there and we are familiar with every single property. Um, uh, like a few others have said, we do not use a buyer agreement. Um, just it's it's not no one out here really does so you know and and i've always been of the belief that if you aren't happy with my representation you need to find somebody you can be happy with um and so i just you know my goal is to make sure i understand how do you like to communicate do you like text do you like phone do you like email um i can i can customize my relationship to you whatever you want um, you know, how often do you want me to reach out to you? Um, you know, some people are high touch and they need to be talked a lot. Um, and some like to communicate text. So just trying to understand what, where their comfort zone is. And then we will accommodate ourselves to make sure that we work in the manner that they want to work. So, but I love this idea of, uh, commitment to excellence. Bobby, can you share it? I want that. With the uh, Las Vegas Raiders, their commitment <laughs> to excellence program. So he'll put it on there. We're going to now go from the islands back down to Florida, the Tannis guy in Florida, Cameron Smith. And we're going to talk to Cam. He, see, his tan's getting better, which means he's selling more houses. Cam, what is the process that you and your team do when it comes to converting buyers in this crazy market when there's limited inventory, the market's on fire and they think whatever they see online is the truth. So how do you set the stage with them? Yeah, that's exactly what happens. They see it online and they think that's the facts and that's just not what it is. Um, about 70% of my buyers aren't from here. I love that you asked about Martha's Vineyard because I was kind of hoping that she would go into the same stuff. And that's so cool that you have a local office that you have walk-ins. I wish I had that on the beach down here, but I don't. Um, so a lot of my clients are, you know, online leads or they're phone call leads, or like Bobby was saying, open house leads. Every single lead where they're from gets treated differently and it's approached differently. One thing that is kind of surprising you guys is every client I work with, I work with them under a buyer broker agreement, hundred percent. Um, the reason I do that, it's how I keep 3% commission, uh, you know, and, and I, we're not going to talk about commissions because that, that's another topic for another day, but that's the reason I do it because the down here, it's starting to slide and it's the one way that I'm able to, you know, obviously keep the commission up. Um, so going into the different leads, obviously phone call leads right now are what I'm targeting. I'm getting a ton of them from the viral marketing I'm doing. Um, most of those people don't have a realtor yet. They're awesome. They call you, Hey, we see you online. We're thinking about moving, um, tell us. And you, literally they're just like a, a virgin lead and they're great. And they reach out to you, they're happy, they're friendly, they're great. Um, with those folks, I'm not worried so much about converting them. They're already converted. They wanna work with me. I just get them in the CRM, get them seeing properties, get them into uh, the loan program, obviously, that's huge. Uh, getting them pre-approved and, and then so forth and so forth. Um, drip leads or leads that come through like Facebook or ads that you have that are cold leads. Those leads you call and they're going to be working with other people. They've been on 15 websites. They're subscribed to Zillow and Realtor.com and Redfin and Trulia. They've got a million people. So the first thing you ask is, hey, who, you know, are, are you getting a loan or are you getting financing? Oh, we're getting financing. What mortgage broker are you working with? Blah. Or they'll say, we're not working with one. If they're not working with one, the chance that they're actually really working with an agent is pretty slim. So it's a qualifying question for two things. Are they pre-qualified? And if they're working with an agent, if they say, yes, we got a mortgage broker, well, how did you hear about that mortgage broker? I'd love you to see my guy. We can compete rates. You use whoever's got the best rates, 
but they'll say, oh, you know, so-and-so. So if they do say someone else is working with them or they've been working with someone else, I ask, have you signed a contract with them or have you signed anything with them? That's obviously question one. They always say no because nobody uses buyer broker agreements. You say, great. I say, hey, I completely agree. I, I understand that you're wanting to work with someone. Um, you know, are you really looking for an agent to represent you or are you just looking for an agent to show you homes and show you photos online? And then you shut up, right? And you listen and they'll tell you, they'll tell you exactly what they want. So then once they tell you, you can decide, is this a lead that I want to move forward with? Do I want to represent this person? Or am I going to say, hey, good luck with your other guy. If you have any questions, give me a call and move on to your next lead. Um, you know, you gotta, you, you choose your clientele. That's really important is you choose who you're working with. I don't really have the problem with being uh, competing with other agents. Once someone is on the phone with me, they're my client. I tell them everything they want to hear. Um, not everything they want to hear, but I tell them the facts and I tell them what, you know, they, they need to hear because of our market and I educate them. And once you educate them and you come from what you're giving them and you're giving them everything they want, why would they work with anyone else? That's the way that I see it. Now, with that said, I still get my buyer broker agreement signed because I'm not going to bug you. And this is what I tell them. I say, hey, I will be the best realtor you have. I'm here for you. Uh, I know you're not ready right this second. Most of my clients aren't buying right this second. Um, but I'm not going to keep bugging you. This is why I work under a contract. And, and, and you explain it to them. It's all transparency. It's all education. Um, and then obviously experience. Having the experience of knowing your market, knowing your analytics, knowing what the homes are selling for. And being able to go over that on the phone without hesitation, without stuttering, without saying, uh, you know, sounding like you don't know what you're talking about, that is what converts clients for me, is being experienced, knowing my statistics, knowing my analytics. Um, but I made that a big part of my, my career is, you know, I, I look young. I've been young through my whole career. Um, I want to come across as the most educated, on top of the market, best realtor in the area. If you don't choose me, you're dumb. That's how I look at it. And it's because I have all the statistics. I have all the numbers. I have everything for you. Um, you just need to ask the questions. Then the other thing is before the very first consultation on the phone, you need to tell people, hey, if you have any questions or you see anything, call me. The reason is, is that the internet, as great as it is, there's all kinds of misinformation or like, I like to call it fake news because people down here love the term fake news. All kinds of fake news on the internet and, and you might Google a question and it's right for New York or Michigan or Ohio, but down here, every state's different. So just give me a call or shoot me over a text. And that's a great time to explain your hours of operation. I work from 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. You can text me anytime between those hours. If it's outside those hours, send me a text. And if I'm available, I'll give you a call. You know, you, you set the standard of what you're expecting, what your hours of operation are. Um, and, the, and the clients really respect that. That's what I found. The more you set and the more guidelines you set, the better your clientele is. Uh, but you can't be desperate, right? Now, as the market shifts and as homes don't start, you know, slow down selling, people get more and more desperate. That is when we need to sharpen our lead source. Uh, so we're getting better clientele or, you know, A plus type clients rather than B clients that we're trying to obviously convert to A clients. A couple things before I let you guys go. Um, be related, not home as housing in the medium. Cam, let me ask you a quick broker. question, Cam. Sure, buddy. And I Go know ahead. that the people on this call want to know this. When do you introduce the buyer broker agreement? And how do you distribute it to the potential buyer? So what I do is I give them one, if they're here in person, right? So again, everyone's different depending on where the lead's coming from. If it's here in person, they get one free day of showings. And at the end of the day, before we, we wrap up showings, I stop and I say, hey, guys, just so you know, you know, it, one, if they're interested in writing an offer, then we go through the offers and blah, blah, blah. But before I go, I always stop them and I say, hey, guys, if you're interested in writing an offer, here's what our offer looks like. And I carry with me our offer. And we go through that. And at the end of the offer, guess what's it? My buyer broker even. And then I explain it to them. Hey, everyone here in Florida works as a transactional agent. I don't know how it is in your state. This is part of knowing, obviously, your laws and the rules. But here in Florida, you work as a transactional agent. That means that we are actually looking after the transaction, not looking after you. Now, and then I explain, obviously, how the buyer broker agreement works. Now, what's really interesting about our buyer broker agreement here in Florida um, is if you leave the uh, agency blank, it is defaulted as a transaction agent. So most of my buyer broker agreements are actually transactional agent agreements. This uh, limits a lot of liability being a single agent. Now, I've had a few folks go, whoa, whoa, hold on. It says I'm still a transactional agent, which is true. Um, Pete, like you said, I'm never going to sue anyone. I'm not going to chase anyone. This isn't 
this isn't for me to try to get you, you know, your, your 2%. This is so that I know that you're committed to me so that when I'm spending my time getting things set up, I'm searching for you, I'm calling you. I know that we have a working agreement. Um, and, and I just prefer working with people that really like having, you know, their ducks in a row. Uh, every time that I have someone that kind of goes, oh, I don't want to do that. Hey, big red flag. Then, you know, from then on out, you know what you're working with. It's a great way to, um, you know, go through and filter through people. And that's what I do. So I give them one free showing if they're in person at the end, I explain it to them. And then I digitally send it over to them by email, as well as a whole bunch of great information about our area. Um, and then if they're online, it's typically with the first offer. So with online leads, a lot of them, you know, recently have been, they call me, I go out and see a property and there's only one property and we're putting an offer in on it. That's, you know, same day we have the buyer broker agreement included with the offer. Uh, and we go forward from there. So it, it's the you first day of working. You DocuSign. DocuSign. Okay, great. Absolutely. So, so Dwayne Whitaker, who's on fire today, asks, how easy and beneficial is it to convert an FHA buyer to cash? And what I think he's meaning is what Bobby reflected on in some of the past trainings where you go to different mortgage people and get them as good as cash up front. So how know, often are you doing that in your marketplace? I don't do that. I don't work with FHA buyers. There you go. Okay. That's a great answer from Cam Smith. By uh, the way, yeah, Cameron gives everyone sunblock 50. He gives them a towel. He gives us the whole, the whole thing. So they're ready for the beach in Florida. You know, that's a big, big thing. I want to move from Cameron to Matt Battiata, the number one agent in the world for EXP. He's not bragging. He's just applying for a job. Matt, how are you converting buyers that are coming to you through past clients as referrals? Is it a slam dunk or are they also shopping around? Well, no, referrals, I would say, are pretty much a slam dunk. Um, but I definitely, there's a couple of things. People have, everybody's made some great points. Um, but the only, so the only things that I would add to that is I think for a lot of people on the call, um, you know, I don't typically sign, especially if most of the buyers that I end up working with are, are referrals. So I'm not going to sign them to a buyer's agreement personally, but, um, I think for a lot of the people on the call, when you get somebody, um, the buyer's agreement that I've always used when I use one is, uh, it's called the VIP buyer agreement. It's not the California association of realtors one. It, all it does is just outlines your response of what you're going to do for them and what you expect back from them. And the only thing that you expect back from them is their loyalty, right? Um, it says, you know, we always had a cancellation clause that if they wanted to cancel it, they could. It just outlines all the things that Mitch went over. You know, when you see a for sale by owner, when you go to an open house, if, you know, new construction, these are all the things that you do. And this is what we're going to do for you. And we're going to, you know, we're going to get you pre-qualified and we're going to negotiate a home warranty and we're going to do all the things that we do. And just so that they understand the process, because it, even if they're not a first time buyer, even if they bought homes before, you know, they don't do this every day, so they don't remember everything. And, you know, if you don't do that, you will have clients that say, Hey, I just want to let you know, we, uh, we went into an open house the other day and we got a house <laughs> and you're like, congratulations. That's great. <laughs> so, and they don't even realize that they're, that they're kind of, you know, that they're, maybe they do, but you know what I'm saying? It, that's, that's the benefit of using uh, that VIP buyer agreement. Um, I think that was originally like a Craig Proctor or um, contract, but it's very straightforward. And it just says, you know, you just, that's the whole buyer presentation. You just go, I think there's 12 things on there. We're going to get you pre-approved. We're going to send you homes where, you know, et cetera, et cetera. You to let us know when you want to see them. It just outlines the, the relationship. Um, so I think that's a good thing to do, especially if you're working with a buyer you don't know. Um, it's again, it's not anything where you're going to go sue somebody if they go around you. Um, it doesn't have any teeth in it. You know, at the end of the day, it's just to set the, the relationship with a buyer. The other thing that I think is really important to educate buyers is to use stories. So, you know, if you've recently worked with a buyer and, you know, the thing was listed at a million bucks and there were seven offers and you got your buyer, uh, the property because you went up to 1.3 or whatever. Um, it's really important to let to tell those stories because 
even, you know, for, for the time being, it's a, at least here in San Diego, it's still a multiple offer situation and buyers are getting, get really, really frustrated and exasperated because, you know, they come in and make a great offer and they still don't get the property and they don't get a counter offer. So it's important to educate your clients and, you know, these buyers of the fact that you really know what you're doing and you know how to get offers accepted. And if they're working with you, they're not going to be frustrated. Um, and so tell stories about recent buyers where you've, you've gotten them the deal, right? Because that's really, really important. Um, the other thing is to utilize your lender. So everybody should have a really good lender that you work with. And that lender should be really good at cross-selling you. So when you refer that buyer to that lender, the lender says, boy, you are in great hands with, uh, with Dennis. He's a great agent. I've worked with him for years. Um, you know, you're really going to have a leg up on the other buyers you're competing with because, you know, Dennis has been in the business forever. And even if you haven't been in the business forever, your lender will say, you know, really smart agent, really educated, knows the business really well, knows the area really well. Boy, you're in really, really good hands. And if your lender doesn't do that, you need to have a conversation with your lender and explain to them that they need to do that. Right. Um, you know, I, 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 and then, you know, you can even do it with agents and I'll say one other thing I've noticed because we were in such a competitive market, I've done some deals lately with listing agents who've told me point blank, I don't, because, you know, when there's seven offers, of course, everyone's wondering, gosh, are you representing any of the buyers? And I've had a few listing agents say, you know, I don't do that anymore. I don't do any dual agencies. It's just not worth it. Everybody gets pissed off. So you can also tell your buyers that like, you know, uh, if they're, if they're people that call you up and say, I, I want to go through the listing agent, et cetera. So, you know what, there's a lot of listing agents who literally will not take, will not represent you as the buyer. They're going to refer you to somebody else, et cetera. So um, um, I think that's, that's Matt, Matt, sure. you make a good point. That's a gray area too, you guys, you want to really explain the legalities of that because you know, you're, you're playing kind of the middle of the road. It's really charcoal on that. And there's a lot of um, lawsuits and things going on right now concerning that. You know, there's a, a major, major, major uh, uh, federal one going on right now in Missouri about that. So you'll want to read that. I know it's in the chat box. So click on that and make yourself aware of what's going on. When it, when it comes to buyer brokers agency compared to listing agency and so forth. Understand that and explain it. You have to remember most of these people don't understand it. So Matt's giving you gold here, right? This is gold because you want to know how to explain it. Selling is not telling. Selling is sharing the point you're trying to get across through stories and success stories, not negative stories. You can tell a few hardships or where people faltered by doing it their way, but you want to tell success stories that you were involved with and how you uplifted people and helped them. That's the big thing. Because like Matt says, what you're trying to do is build that relationship and get that commitment. That is the main thing when you're talking to these clients, because they don't know who, who to trust and who's what. Everybody is ABR, top 1%, top 10%, GRI, SCT, they don't know what it means. They just want to know what is the process? What are the ins and outs? What do I have to pay you? How does it work? And how are you going to represent me? That's it. And change your vernacular. It's not commissions. It's professional fees. If you're a professional and you're doing this professionally, you charge a professional fee, just like they get paid at their work. They sign a contract to get paid at wherever they're working. They just don't go in at nights and weekends and every day at eight to go to work and punch in or, or to be on the payroll with no contract. It doesn't work that way. You get a professional fee for the time, energy, and expertise you put in to guiding them, advising them, educating them, and holding their hand through the process as if you were buying. That's what you want to say. The other thing that you guys want to want to really mention to people is the relationship side of it. Not only in the public's view, but in the private view between professionals, between other agents, who's going to give you the inside track, who's going to give you the bottom line, who's going to give you the details that you don't read on the internet, who's gonna point out certain things. 
Because what they also don't understand is if they go directly to the listing agent, he's not going to mention the, the house down the street that sold off market for a million bucks when he's asking a million five. He's not going to mention that to you. Guess what? I'm going to bring that to your attention so that we can make an educated decision and say, is this price in, uh, you know, inflated or is it realistic based on the market? Because the market is moving fast. You have to really educate people because nobody wants to make a mistake. Nobody wants to buy something above where it should be. Everybody wants an opportunity. It's the fear of missing out. It's FOMO. So here's the deal, you guys. Invite everybody you can to this mastermind every week. I don't care what company they're with. I don't care how long they've been in business. You're doing them a disservice if you don't invite them because this is going to help 5X, 10X their business. It's going to make them a better realtor, which is going to make us better professionals. Right now, we're just this much above used car salesmen because everybody gets in real estate because they've failed at everything else in life. That's the perception from the general public. Now we're gonna move from residential and I'm, I'm really curious and I invited my friend Jay Quinn on out of Newport Beach. Jay specializes in commercial. Let's hear it from the commercial guy. How do they get commercial buyers committed to working with them? Because I know a lot of people out there do residential and they tend to do some commercial deals, whether units or industrial or retail or office. Jay, how do you get people committed to working with you on the commercial side? Sure. Uh, thanks, Peter. Appreciate it. So um, we're not too dissimilar, but I would tell you that when we have a buyer come to us and ask us to represent them, we usually lead with um, our capabilities and our background and our history. We have a very nice color, very nice uh, corporate brochure that we advance to them for their review to make sure they know who we are, what we're capable of doing. We go through a pretty selective interview process with the buyer. Because um, frankly, we don't take on everybody that, that comes to us. We are very selective. We say no more than we say yes, because we tell the buyer a couple of things. One, um, we don't need to practice. We're really busy. We have a pretty full pipeline. And if we say yes to them, we're saying no to somebody else. We, so we want a commitment. Two, we make sure they know the fee they're paying us is a success fee. If we close the deal, we get paid. If we don't, we don't. And we don't ask any upfront fees. We don't ask for any deposits. And so we say, we say to them, if you want our expertise, which we have confirmed and um, the buyer's clear on what we can bring, what capabilities we have, that then we tell them if they want to engage us, then we expect them with us so that we're protected because we go out and we spend our time, we spend our resources, we spend our uh, expertise on their behalf without any, any fee or payment unless they close the deal. So that's really important they understand that. And we tell them, we don't need to practice. If we take you on, we take you on as a, as a client. We expect the same back. We want the same loyalty from you expect from us. And we also make sure when we explain our capabilities that we let them know that we have access to all the inventory in the marketplace. We know the broker relation with broker networks around the market they're looking for so we can access off market deals. We know who's ha who has something that's not on LoopNet or Crexy. Um, we can tell them that we can bring them everything that they are looking for and they're confident that we're gonna bring um, them all the property they want to find. And it's really inefficient for them and their time to talk to multiple brokers because all they're doing is taking more of their time, getting the same information, the same expertise, when we can do that and we can be their focal point for them. But to, to sum up, really, our differentiator is our, is our capabilities. And we make sure we tell them, you're hiring the best in the business. You're hiring the best in the marketplace. Um, and, and, and they're confident when they sign with us that, that, that they're, they're getting that. So there's, they, they don't want to go anywhere else, right? There, there's no need to, right? I love that. I love that, uh, you know, we don't need to practice. We're professionals, we're scheduled. We have a certain allotment of time. I love that. And that was a great one that, you know, where, where it's inefficient to waste their time and talk and shop around with multiple people 
and multiple brokers, it's not going to get them what they want. And you have to explain that, you guys, because if they call the other broker directly because it's the listing agent or they're just shopping around, a lot of them aren't going to have the same relationships that you have for 20, 25, 30 years, right? Because they have to understand that we all work together and we have to work in cooperation. That's how it works. And a lot of them don't understand it. I'm amazed at how many agents don't explain and pre-frame up front how it works. You know, I always, yeah, Pete, yeah go ahead, Jeff. Let me say this. When, when, when we sign them as a, as, a, as, a, as a client, I let them know that we're not going to negotiate on their behalf, not on the seller's behalf. They're, they've engaged us. So now we represent them. We don't represent the seller. And so if we don't, if they go to an agent directly, they go to a listing agent, a listing agent works for the seller. They're not going to work on their best behalf. They're not going to try to get the best price for the, for the transaction because they're, they're fiduciaries with the seller, not with the buyer. So they're really engaging us to save money. And ultimately the total fee is going to get paid anyway, whether it's totally to the listing agent or split with me and him. So it was really in their best interest for the best economics to engage a buyer agent for sure. Yeah, and the other gold nugget there, I think that I want to just press upon that I heard you guys with Jay was, you know, when he's saying yes to you, he's saying no to a different to somebody else, right? So he's he's showing that he is organized, he's scheduled, he's a professional, he's aware of his time and his value. Because you have to have a value proposition. They think we're all one in the same. And keep in mind one thing: how often are people buying houses? The national average is maybe once every seven, eight years. The process changes. They don't understand the marketplace. They don't understand how it works. They don't even understand how we get paid. You have to sit down either through Zoom and create that relationship because when you see people, it creates a relationship, right? Body language, imitation, how you look, how you relate to people. Um, or in person, even better, belly to belly, and schedule a 30-minute success strategy session. That's what I call it, success strategy session, so that I can pre-frame to them what the expectations are, how I work, how I like to be communicated with, and everything about me and my experience and my background, and I tell them stories, and then I make it all about them. I ask them a ton of questions before they come in. And I am aware of their situation. Are they renting? Do they own? Are they moving up? Are they moving down? Are they moving from within the state, from outside the state? Uh, what's their timelines? What's their motivation? What do they need? What's their top 10 list? Have them make a top 10 list. And subliminally using NLP pre-frame to them that the majority of the buyers right now in the marketplace, if they find, find six out of their top 10, they should be making an offer. We hardly ever find eight, nine, or 10 out of 10. Set that and pre-frame that to them. So when you go and you're showing houses, have their top 10 list with you and go through it and say, how great is this? This checks off nine of your boxes. What do you feel we should do? Let's make an offer. Lock the door. Don't let anybody else come in. They come to the door, have the key in your hand, say, yeah, we'll be out in half an hour. You get to wait outside, right? This is a battle. You don't get anything for second place, but you have to know how to advise people. And then you have to have a system. There's no right way, way to do it. Like Cam said, you get one day, one day free showings and then you have to commit. Or maybe you say, hey, it's going to be a weekend of free showings and then you have to commit. Or I want that commitment right up front. You know, you have to know what your process is and not go away from it. Because I got news for uh, Pete. Yes. Yeah. I, I, one last thing. I apologize. Keep, keep interrupting. One of the things that I, I, I incorporated in our business that was very important years ago was we learn how to say no. We tell people no. If we think they're not committed to us, if we think they're a waste of time, if they're giving us red flags, like you mentioned before, we know how we'll say no. And I think it's really important. Younger guys don't know how to say no. They want to take on everybody. And you learn with time. that You just got to say, you know, it's not going to work for us. So we're just going to say goodbye. And thank you very much. And I'll shut up. <laughs> oh, exactly. That's great input to you guys. You got to know your audience, right? Your presentation should be tailored to your audience. 
there's four different types of personality types. You have to have a presentation for each one. And really, that's how you connect with them. Because this is a relationship game. Real estate is spelled real estate because it's relationships, real relationships. That's what it's all about. You want to keep that relationship. And just like Bobby added before, we ask for those referrals on three different points. Typically, we mention it subliminally up front at the success strategy session. Hey, I would love to help your friends in the future, but I want to help you first. Then when their offer gets accepted, then when we remove contingencies, and then when we close, then 30 days after we close, 60 days after we close, 90 days after we close, 180 days after we close. You have to be part of their life. You can't go through the process and then shut it off and disappear because this is the largest asset outside of somebody's children that they'll buy. And you've got to be aware of that. And they're nervous. And there's tons of misinformation out there. So back it up with videos. Send quick videos. Or go and explain the areas and what, what you love about it or where it's trending or what's happening. And just be a guide to them. I think that's really important. The other thing with the current market that we're seeing out in Southern California that you have to pre-frame to people is the appraisal process. So even if it's waived, how does that look? Because the banks are coming short on all appraisals. Right now in Southern California, if you buy a property or get a loan uh, above a million five, it takes two appraisals. I mean, when have you ever had two people agree on anything in life? So you have to explain that to them and say, look, this is how it works. These are the options. This is what we may come across and pre-frame it, you guys. When you pre-frame, you set an expectation or you get them prepared. When they're not prepared, that's when people freak out. That's when you have you know, a five blaze fire on your hands. That's, that's what you have to do. The strategy session, the success strategy session, the triple S is the most important part of this whole process because, whoa, Bobby just got a kiss from Cheryl. That's awesome. Um, I, well, hi, Cheryl. Cheryl knows the process. That's how, that's how she got Bobby. He was interviewing her on, on a, to get her signed to a buyer broker and then she signed him up to a marriage. So it all worked out, but this is the deal. You have to have a process and you have to commit to it. We're not saying you have to use a buyer broker, you don't. But whatever you commit to, commit to it. If anybody would like any of the commitment to excellence or VIP buyer's broker that Matt has everybody sign, let's put it on the tribe site or you can reach out to Bobby or Matt directly and they'll, they'll get it to you, all right? Right now we're at 10.02, you guys. I just want to thank everyone. I want to thank our special guest, commercial extraordinaire, Jay Quinn. If anybody has any type of commercial referrals, reach out to Jay Quinn. He's a great guy. He's super integrity-based and honest, and that's the key to any business, whether it's commercial or residential. But guide your people. Be the guide. Advise them. They're all running around with their heads cut off. And like I said to somebody, the other day he said, oh, I only work with listing agents. I said, I totally get it. I totally understand how you feel. How's that been working out for you? Just ask him that question. Because guess what? If it worked out for him, he wouldn't be talking to me. That's the deal. All right? Listen, everybody have a great week. Next week, we're going to, to share how to ace a listing presentation. All right? How to really... Get your foot in the door and get it done. And not only are we going to have the number one EXP agent in the world on, we're going to have the number two individual EXP agent on the world on. I brought both of them in, so they both owe me favors. So I wanted to thank everybody, our special guests. I wanted to thank all the people who are typically on. Thank you for sharing. Sharing is caring, like my eight-year-old says. And let's have a great week, a great weekend. And go help others. If you help enough people get what they want, you'll automatically get what you want. All right, guys? Thanks so much.